Welcome to everyone again. Uh, contrary to the impression you may have gotten uh, from Radha, however, this institute is not about Shunyamurti at all. Our guru is Sri Ramana Maharshi. And uh, my role is simply to, uh, to help channel uh, those divine teachings that have been given by the great guru of our age, make sure that the accuracy and purity are sustained and the, the knowledge that has uh, come through that great source is, is kept in its, its true context and format and all of the implications are developed so that we can attain the supreme liberation, which is our birthright. And so this is a very simple institution. It really is not very complex. Uh, our main purpose here is uh, to inform those who are seeking truth that truth is available and it's within you already. Uh, you don't have to do a lot of exploration outside. That's the mistake people make, looking for it outside instead of within. So here we learn to turn our attention inward and to Realize that within each of us is what has often been called satyam jnanam anantam, the truth, the unalloyed absolute truth of what is real, satyam. Jnana means the overflowing knowledge that is the self-knowledge of the absolute not conceptual knowledge about some third party, not God as some other or some belief system or mythology, but the direct self-knowledge that emerges from the realization of the God self that you are. That is pure knowledge of all that is, because all that is is really a manifestation of the one supreme being. And anantam means infinity. There is no end. There is no point where, ah, okay, I've got it all, there's no more to learn. Endless, infinite ocean of truth, knowledge, beauty, love, and all of the qualities that make human life worth living. All of that is within us, within each of us. And so the job of a facilitator of Sat Yoga is simply to help you tap into that infinite richness that is within you and to not settle for less and to not accept excuses that, oh, I'm not worthy of that or, you know, maybe 10 more lifetimes from now I can do it or, <laughs> you know, you got to be born in India to do this or, right? Whatever the excuse is. Uh, don't buy it, because there are none. If you want the bliss, it's here now. Why wait? You, know, you don't even have to buy it on the installment plan. You know, it's, it's all available at once. And uh, it doesn't require any uh, book learning, and it doesn't require any uh, ascetic, uh, difficult achievements of Renunciation doesn't require a lot of acrobatic talent at doing strange poses. And the physical yoga doesn't require having to hold your breath for long periods. <laughs> Whatever you might think doesn't require any of that. It's simply recognition of who you are, who you have always been, who you always shall be whether you are incarnated apparently in a body, which isn't really the case, or there is no body, because bodies appear in the mind. The whole paradigm of the modern world is upside down. Okay? This is the, the, the most radical shift, paradigm shift you have to make in order to get this. 
And, and once you get this paradigm shift, everything else is like, oh, of course, obvious. It, it seems perhaps non-obvious because we have been indoctrinated into the belief in materialism. And materialism is a myth that has already been disproven by quantum physics. Why they still attempt to teach this is a very strange thing, except people have invested their careers in the belief in materialism. And if you take away the belief in materialism, the whole system of our society and all of its so-called expertise that is causing the environmental disasters, political, social disasters, all of it will collapse. Starting with the medical system that wants you to believe that illnesses are physical and organically caused and that you've got to deal with them with uh, interventions uh, in terms of chemistry and physiology and gross anatomy. When, when they're honest, they'll admit that almost all illnesses are psychosomatic. They're, they are suffering in the soul that's projected in the body because it's an overflow of a negative energy that can't be symbolized, it can't be transcended, and so it gets expressed as physical pain. But it's not. It's soul pain. And we have a world of people suffering soul pain that isn't being treated by the doctors who give pills and other band-aids and don't get to the root of people's suffering. And so that's why Radha accurately called this a hospital, because this is a place of healing where we get to the root of what ails you. And that root is uh, never your serotonin levels or whatever they'll try to sell you so that literally you'll be addicted to some kind of pill or some kind of uh, process that mutilates you in order to try to feel better and other than maybe satisfying some masochistic tendency, will not produce the healing you're looking for. I think you already all know that, but people don't know that there are alternatives. That's what they need to know. And they need to know that there are doctors out there who are also becoming healers, like some of our, uh, the members of our Sangha, who can, when appropriate, offer the uh, allopathic uh, assistance, but can also offer the much deeper spiritual healing that is lacking in our world. So that's one area. But the entire educational system is based on materialism. You know, the Marxist system is materialism, dialectical materialism, and although that's fallen, it still uh, has a, a huge amount of following. And then the materialism of the capitalist, consumerist version, all of it uh, wants to pawn off uh, trinkets on us and, and uh, pretend that life is about uh, gaining a lot of toys that are ultimately very boring and burdensome anyway rather than to find the real treasures of the heart. And so here we have a free school. You don't have to have a lot of money to come and we help you to find those treasures for yourself and then share them with the world and uh, recognize you don't have to have a lot of money in your bank account in order to be a, the wealthiest being in the world because the true wealth of God consciousness, of divine love, of fullness and realization of your unity with all that is and with the beauty and perfection that underlies our world even through the distortions of the collective ego that have ravaged the beauty of nature and destroyed so many living things and environments. But nonetheless, the supreme beauty of our being has never been touched or defiled. And if we would just awaken, if a critical mass of us would awaken to the truth of our being, we could turn the whole trajectory of history back toward a kingdom of heaven, literally, not a religious version of that, but the truth of that, that original vision that all religious paths have shared through history, that this could be a Garden of Eden again on a planetary level. And if our generation now, the people alive now, don't do it, don't rise to the occasion, it won't happen. This is it. We're at the end. It, it is... It is ecstasy or extinction. 
<laughs> for our species. And so each of us has to make that decision for ourselves. We're not here to convert other people. That's useless. Convert yourself. Turn yourself into a lighthouse, an ecstatic, overflowing fountain of love and wisdom and power to lead life in a way that shows the inherent integrity of the human spirit. And the power of that will be magnified and synergized by all of those around the world resonating at that same vibrational frequency of truth and love and will create a real revolution on our planetary surface. And it will be one that unites us rather than divides and, and allows more wars and more devastation, but changes human consciousness at its very root. We have the power to do that. They try to tell you that you don't have any. You know, the 1% has the power and all of that. Well, m maybe acting at the external levels of political parties and all of that, that may be true. But at the level of spiritual action, it's not true. At the level of spiritual action, we are each of us all powerful to bring about the change that we want, that we yearn for, that we pray for. But until we turn that prayer inward and say, I'm not going to look for some Messiah to come down and do it for me, but I must be that which I am praying for. I must manifest that power. It is within that I shall bring it forward and dissolve whatever obstacles have blocked my own realization of divine love and light. We can do that together. And so this Sangha exists to support your decision to realize the power and the beauty of your infinite self. And so I hope that all of you will claim that power. Don't wait for some something to happen, whether astrologically or politically or whatever, to say, oh, okay, I better do it. You know, don't wait for the financial collapse that's going to happen and when all of your money will be worthless and you'll be in panic and wondering how to survive uh, before you gain your empowerment. Don't wait for World War III to happen. Don't let it get to that point. Let's claim the power now. Because it takes a while before that energy field will build up to the level where it cracks through the collective ego and brings about the results that we need to happen on a manifest level. But each of us is responsible for our own values and our own integrity. To live, not just to talk the talk, but to live and walk the walk of spiritual self-realization. And so, as Radha was saying, people here take vows. And what are those vows? They're vows of integrity. They're vows of living up to the imperative of going beyond egocentricity. Of no longer living as an ego that wants to prove its superiority and specialness and get its own way and feel some pseudo-autonomy and not uh, surrender to higher law and to the need for unity and for the recognition of the power higher and more pure, more true than the ego mind can ever be. It is that purity of divine consciousness that is the essence of our being that we must recover and remove all of the filters and all of the garbage that is collected on top of that purity of our being and dissolve the, those negative and limited thought forms that we've identified with that have distorted our own way of being and living and caused us to deviate from the divine path into a perverted human egocentric path that served only to bring more suffering 
It didn't bring fulfillment. I think everyone who has reached your midlife crisis, these days they happen by the age 25, <laughs> uh, realize that the ego is a dead end. But then how do you go beyond it? That's really the, the question. Is there a life after the ego? I would say that's when life begins. Right? But how do you find a community that will appreciate egolessness and not walk all over you, right? Because we're trained that if you make yourself vulnerable and loving, then people will rip you off and uh, leave you in the dust. Uh, so uh, it's important to have a community that honors egolessness and purity and innocence, the innocence that Christ talked about it, becoming like a little child, but not like a little naive, gullible child. The innocence must be united with wisdom and empowerment and the love united with law, the cosmic law, the karmic law, the understanding of how this phenomenal plane really operates. And when we understand that logos, we won't be fooled by the ego's seductions and traps. And we won't be prey to other predatory egos, but in fact, we'll have the power to dissolve those pseudo-powerful uh, egoic imposters and see through to the divine core of every being. It's that power to see the truth and help it to emerge from behind the lies of the ego for every being so that all can recover their divinity. This is the traditional role of the bodhisattva in the Buddhist tradition. But this is the meaning of Christ consciousness. It's the meaning of uh, Jivan Mukta. It's the meaning of living the great Tao. Whatever religious background you come from, there's an equivalent concept that it symbolizes this state as our true state, our true destiny as human spirits, evolving into the ultimate realization of our potential. And this is, in a way, the spawning season for angels. It's this time of the deepest darkness on our planet in which the new dawn is coming. And that new dawn can only come if our own inner light emerges. We must be that dawn. It's not a physical dawn. It's a spiritual dawning, a rebirth, a renaissance indeed, but the renaissance not simply of artistic or other subsidiary forms of expression of beauty, but of the source of beauty itself. To become, as a famous pop movie has said, an avatar. And that doesn't mean that you take on some alien body form, but that you realize that this body form is intended to be the channel for the manifestation of the Supreme Being. The one Supreme Being that all of us participate in and are the manifestations of. And that is our true nature. This is the tradition that is referred to as Advaita, non-duality. In other words, there are not two, there is one. There is one true being. And you are that being, because there, there is nothing but God. And even though the ego illusion can occlude that, can cloud our awareness of it, but that remains the fact. There is only God in all of the most bizarre forms you could imagine, but it's always the same being, the same beauty, the same love that underlies and manifests and animates all the forms that we see. Whether we think of them as animate or non-animate, all is a manifestation of the one consciousness when we recognize that, that we are also that, then we stop identifying with the body. We don't think, my, my consciousness ends here. No, because consciousness is non-localizable. It's everywhere, but also nowhere, because consciousness is not objective. 
It's not a thing. You can't put it under a microscope. You can't analyze it scientifically, and that's why the modern culture can't grasp spirit as what is real. But consciousness is the only reality. You've never encountered any physical object without being conscious of it. Everything you are aware of, you are aware of because it appears in your consciousness. And so consciousness is primary. Even though we may label something as an external object, that idea appears internally as part of our consciousness. So all of our ideas about a so-called world out there, we have to recognize are simply mental objects appearing in the world in here. And ultimately everything, every sensation, every, every so-called object is simply either a label, a representation of a, a sensual phenomenon that is actually a thought, an appearance in consciousness, a modification of consciousness, but there is actually nothing outside of consciousness. It's that realization that will spring you out of the prison of the materialist hell realm that keeps you stuck in very small, finite chamber of your total consciousness. That realization that all there is is consciousness and you are that consciousness. And then, if you can train yourself not to fall into the trap of letting the chatter of the mind obscure the purity of consciousness in its pure form, before consciousness begins producing a, a web of ideas and images and deviations from its own basis, to focus on what is consciousness itself in its pure form prior to language, prior to the emission of these ideas that then seduce us into falling into narratives and theories and belief systems and all of that that get us away from the source of our consciousness. Stay with the silence that is prior to all thought. That's yoga, simply that, okay? It's, it's like when you watch a movie, don't forget that it's projected on a screen. Okay, no screen, no movie. The screen is more important. And don't forget that it is light pouring on that screen that produces it. Just modifications of light. That's what this is. We think of this as some world that really exists. But the source of the light that produces all of the images and all of the supposed phenomenal realities is simply dimensionally structured consciousness that is actually light pouring on this holographic screen that we think of as a, a material world, but it is actually consciousness itself. And this is now supported by the most avant-garde sciences of our time. This isn't uh, metaphysics anymore, this is physics. When you recognize that, then you will understand that what we think of as this world is an analog to a great dream. And that rather than identify as a character in the dream, which is then subject to all of those laws of the dream, all you need to do is realize, but cohesively and fully realize, that you are the dreamer of the dream. Dreamer, not the dreamy. Not the character. Not the body that appears in the dream, but the pure consciousness that is dreaming it all up. If you return to that level, that's where the power lies. Because then you can redream the dream. Once you've accepted the false identification as the one in the dream, you're stuck. You have no power. You've just disempowered yourself. Psychoanalysts would say it's castration, the ultimate castration of your power. You've cut yourself off from the source of your own consciousness and now you're identified with an object that appears in your own consciousness as if that's you. And it's just now one-tenth of one percent of who you are. You're not even that. It couldn't even be measured on a scale. Because you're the whole universe that appeared as consciousness. That Even the whole universe is a reflection of a tiny bit of the infinity of the potential of consciousness. But let alone thinking you're some 
temporary perishable creature in that world that is your own creation. Then you're suddenly in a nightmare realm of trying, how do I take care of this creature? And, uh, and you've lost touch with the beauty and the majesty and the power of your being, which is the supreme being. You've lost that, and now you're totally focused on taking care of some little perishable illusionary being that you never were. And then you become even more enredado, you pair up with someone else and you create even more helpless little beings that you want to take care of. You can't take care of yourself, but you want to take care of others. And, and your life becomes wrapped up in caring for a few dream objects and, and have now lost all the power to actually redream the world dream, the cosmic dream that needs to be healed. And instead of being able to heal your own life, now you fall further into paranoia, into all the traps of feeling inadequate and unable to care for these karmic responsibilities that you've created, and, uh, and you're a wreck. And soon you're taking all of those pills that the medical establishment offers to help you calm down and de-stress and you know, pretend everything is okay. Well, so there's no solution to all of our life problems once you accept that initial lie, self-deception, of thinking you're just that little perishable organism. So we have to return to the point of empowerment, which is, again, pure awareness, depersonalized and transpersonalized. And in that recognition, you will be free of most of the negativity that plagues your mind and your life instantaneously. Because when you realize that this is all a dream, you can detach from it. You don't take it nearly as seriously. You are, and you're empowered to move more freely, more fluidly in your dream. You can become a lucid dreamer of your life. Even if you're not fully awakened, at least get lucid in the dream. Go for that at the minimum. And then you can begin to lead a much more intelligent life to maximize your opportunities to get a little distance so you can contemplate the larger transcendent reality and become more tuned in and more of a channel so that power flows through you. So you can detach more, you can see things more accurately, you can be in a state of serenity and peace in your dealings with the world, not stressed out and anxious over everything that happens. It will totally change your way of being in the world. And you can lead an authentic human existence and be true to yourself. And the more true you are to yourself, the more truth of yourself then emerges and is given. That's what grace really means. The more truth you want in your life, the more you'll get. And truth is power. The problem is that once you've bought into the false ego, you don't want truth anymore because the truth is unbearable. And what's unbearable is that you've sold out your truth for a mess of pottage, right? For a steady paycheck or a, a bad marriage or whatever it is that you've sold out for. Beach house, you know, uh, whatever position in society, politically or whatever other prestige or whatever you, you sold out for, you know it was a bad deal, right? So. Once you recover your integrity, you can then forgive yourself and forgive others and not carry a burden of guilt and shame and fear. And you can sleep at night and you can be awake during the day and you can make your life into a work of art. But the more that you attain the rediscovery of your divine nature, the more empowered you are in a way that is uncanny and unimaginable to your ego consciousness. You can literally enter the realm of the miraculous. And that's what we teach here at, at this Sangha. Don't settle for less than the miraculous. That's the message of the great sages and saints of all spiritual traditions. You can find them in Christianity, you can find them in Buddhism, you can find them everywhere. We are intended to be beings who can work magic.
the highest white magic. Because we are supernatural beings. We are not simply natural. We have that power if we recover it. And that's how we can change this world. Because this world is given to us to maintain at a higher level of order and of beauty, not to bring it down, to try to turn nature into raw materials to profit from. No, that's, that destroys not only the magic of the world, but our own magic. We drain ourselves of our power to, and we sell out for some dollar that's no longer almighty by any means. And so let's reclaim the real power and the real magic and the real miracle that life is and that life is meant to be. When we are tuned in to the psychic vibrations of consciousness that this, this world really is and not fall for the illusion that material objects dominate and laws of nature that can't be violated and all of this uh, kind of indoctrination into powerlessness. That isn't true. And every scientific theory that has ever been throughout history has been proven wrong. Now they're at the point they can't even create a theory that will adequately express what is. And so now they're positing parallel universes and other kinds of things that have nothing to do with the old idea that science is something you can prove in a laboratory and, and create as a a theory that is evidentiarily backed. It's not true anymore. There's no longer a difference between religion and science in that sense. But then let's go back to the ultimate potential then of religious thought, which is that we are one with the creator of nature, not just with the creations. This was an idea that was with us throughout the Middle Ages in the, in the understanding of nature having two levels. Natura Naturata and Natura Naturans. Spinoza wrote about this, a great philosopher of the West. The nature natured, uh, the, the forms that are created uh, are simply the effect, but the cause is the creative power of nature ever naturing more, evolving, changing, bringing new forms into being, new potentials. And humans are the creatures who have the key to that high level of creativity. It has been given to us, but we've lost it. But when we reclaim that key, we can play a tremendous role in the acceleration of the evolution of this phenomenal plane itself to reflect accurately the beauty of divine nature and return our world into a place of ultimate beauty and love and harmony and peace and everything that, that all of the great prophets and saints of all religions have prayed for and yearned for and taught us to know is within our potential to achieve. And this is the time they have all pointed to, the apocalyptic time, the time of a transition. The Mayans speak of it, of course, the new age, the new sun. This is the time. It's not the end. It is a new beginning. But that new beginning cannot arise externally in this illusory world until that new beginning has flourished in the world of the consciousness of each one of us. There are no obstacles to bringing to fruition the full potential of our being. There are no obstacles except those you buy into that are illusions. And that's why in the East they don't talk about original sin. They, they, they say, that's an illusion, don't buy it. Originally it's all bliss. The real problem is ignorance. We have forgotten the power of our light, of our joy, of our bliss, of our love. We have lost touch with it. That's the sin, if you will. We have to reclaim that power to love. And if we love the world and the source of the world with enough intensity, the power will be given us to become instruments of that power and directly intervene in the course of history to bring about the ultimate manifestation of divine love in terms of a planet that is healed 
of all of the wounds that we ourselves have inflicted on our mother Gaia. And the same mental power that went to inflict the harm, as in the, the myth of Parsifal and the Grail King, that same spear that has destroyed our integrity can heal us. Because it is the spear of concentrated mental power that can now be used not to gain some egoic profit at the expense of the whole, but to bring the concentrated power of divine consciousness to break through the ego and bring love and beauty back to our world. But we have to stop diffusing. We have to end this plague of attention deficit disorder. We have to recollect our energies and bring them one-pointedly back to the source and then allow the power laser-like of that divine consciousness to move through us with the intention and purity of heart to bring about the restoration of the divine beauty that our world is waiting for us to call forth from its own prakriti, its own fundamental nature as light. So our school is here to teach us how to do this, to help bring about a synergy of, of the energy field through uniting as many who, who wish to join us on this grand project and help to transmit this energy as quickly and as effectively as possible to the whole world and join those who are already doing this in many, many parts of the world and in Costa Rica, but to bring unity and synergy back and support all those who are working toward this end of unity and re-empowerment of that which is highest and purest within us all. How many would like to support that dream? Yes? Beautiful. There's enough power in this room tonight to transform the world if we use it. So how about if we meditate together and bring some of that power through and create an energy field? Okay, good. Sit comfortably if you're new.